there are several sections in the agreement that express policy statements, basically, whereby China agrees to commit towards increasing its intellectual property practices and protections in China, that it will stop pressuring foreign investors to engage in technology transfers for joint venture licensing types of arrangements. But there are no concrete measures built into the agreement that actually would enforce any of those. The agreement doesn't talk about any measures to stop Chinese subsidies towards its industry. I think that the administration is certainly going to claim this as a win. They are getting a commitment for a $200 billion increase in imports into China, which will certainly help U.S. producers. Um, that said, the structural changes that would need to happen to really change the position of the U.S. industry towards China, that hasn't been hammered out. And that's probably going to have to be approached in a phase two or maybe a phase three, and that could be several more years. I think this is the hardest that the U.S. government has been towards China in terms of taking hard, concrete measures and not just engaging with China on a softer level. And as a result, the U.S. government has managed to get some concessions in terms of market access and China's agreement to increase their imports and reduce the U.S.-China trade deficit. So um, those are new wins for this particular administration. That said, the major underlying chain issues with regard to predatory technology transfer practices, Chinese government subsidies, those largely remain untouched. Important and remarkable occasion. Today we take a momentous... The major tariffs that have been in effect aren't going anywhere right now under this agreement. So that is going to be the status quo going forward until there's a phase two agreement reached, which may or may not happen before the upcoming election. It should have happened 25 years ago, by the way. But that's okay. The main relief is going to be felt by certain industries in the United States, not consumers. There are four categories of industries where China has agreed to increase its imports. That would be manufacturing, for example, um, aviation, nuclear reactors, washing machines, tech products, uh, steel, etc., agriculture, and energy products, as well as services. Uh, predominantly financial services being targeted. So those industries will feel the impact of increased imports from China and individuals, in particular individual farmers, may feel that impact. I think first the United States government needs to be really clear about what its objectives are for phase two and what it thinks is even feasible to accomplish. So I think that's going to require a lot of effort to identify achievable targets. And then you have to get the Chinese government to be willing to come to the table to revisit their Made in China 2025 policy. And I don't know that that's even going to happen through sit down discussions. I think that it has moved the needle a little bit with, with China, and it has made some progress, but at the same time, I don't think that it achieves the fundamental structural changes that are going to need to happen for US, um, the U.S. tech sector in particular to really feel comfortable, for instance, that their intellectual property is being respected in China.